Hello and welcome to MDG Media. The European tours have unified to what is now the Disc Golf Pro Tour Europe, and we are happy to be kicking off the season here with Belgian Open 2024 coverage. I'm Connor Wood, and with me, Elias Lukanen. Elias, how are you doing? I'm doing very good. Happy to finally be back here in the booth with you. And pretty exciting finally having the Disc Golf Pro Tour Europe here. This is going to be a silver event, so lower tier of the two tiers we have on the Disc Golf Pro Tour Europe. But some of the top players in the field, regardless, gathering here, we see kicking off our feature card, Knut Wallen Haaland, a sponsored player from Norway. Next up, Timo Hartmann, actually the highest rated player in the tournament. It's going to be exciting to see. Not a player who plays a lot internationally, at least not so far. Third on our feature card, Mauri Vilman, top Estonian player who had a fantastic last season. And we have the reigning champion, Teemu Talikainen. Pretty much destroyed the field last year here. I think six stroke advantage in first place. Yeah, crazy good play. And we're starting off on a, quite a nervy hole. Hole one is going to be 74 meters downhill playing into this small island. It's less than a circle, less than the 10 meter circle away is where the OB line is on both the left, right and long. The short side you have some room. You can pretty much choose your shots here. Please welcome Knut Ballen Haaland. Yeah, a very polarizing hole and often a great signal of how your round's going to go. Certainly a gettable birdie to start off. Knut here going for the wide hyzer, a very common play here. He's going with something quite slow. You can see just barely getting over that edge. That's perfect. I'm going to be parked for the birdie. From Germany, representing Latitude 64, please welcome Timo Hartmann. You touched on it earlier. Timo, fantastic player from Germany, but has not competed too much internationally. A lot of people were happy to see him joining the field this year. The first Disc Golf Pro Tour Europe event. Also playing the hyzer, looks to have a nice height and width, relying on the overstability to sit down, and he's done just that. Great throw. Next up, from Estonia, representing Prodigy Discs, please welcome Mauri Vilman. And one thing that's probably good to note on not only this hole, but every hole on the course, conditions are somewhat wet. The ground is quite soft, so a lot of these shots that you see on hole one that are landing on a lot of highs are actually not going to skip a lot because the ground is so soft. And that's kind of not really what let Maori down and there. He was just wide to the left all the, the way. What a great start to the round. The reigning champion of the Belgian Open from Finland, representing Prodigy. Let's, Let's hear, hear it for Temu. Talikainen. As you mentioned, had a very dominant performance at this very tournament last year. Joining us again, looking to see if he can recreate that fantastic weekend. Tim was a very consistent player. Normally not very consistent on this shot though, as he has ripped it into the woods. Both Tim and Mara will have this 15 meter putt to seal the par, hopefully. Do you really need to commit to laying it up or running it? Maori chooses the ladder and unfortunately goes off the island. He'll be looking at a short putt for a double bogey. And how difficult is this putt for Temu after that? And he's also gone over, just barely saved by the edge of the island though. And this is Maori. Might still be a bit of a nervy putt from six meters. No nerves there. We saw him last season, starting off the season really hot, but looks like he's not going to have the same start, at least judging by this whole one. But it can happen very quickly, and a little bit of a nervy putt from Temu there. Low and left, although, does find the putt. We see Timo here for his birdie. Well done there. Timo is someone that has very, I would say, a very traditional European putt. He has that low penetrating spin putt with a bit of a nose up release good birdie there from Knut and kind of exactly what you expect on hole one a couple of overpars and a couple of birdies as well 
we move on here to hole two, certainly a more difficult birdie than the first hole, a 131 meter par three. You have this initial gap to hit the fairway sloping softly right to left with OB lining the right and left sides the entire way. You really want a penetrating shot that flips up into the gap, finds the glide, and tries to settle anywhere near the edge of this tree line. But it's a big throw and requires good touch and control on that distance as well. Very tough birdie compared to hole one. For comparison on hole one, over 40% birdies, but on this one, only about 16%. Though on this one, much tougher to find, uh, find the bogey. And you see a very straight shot with a late fade from Knut, put himself just at circle's edge looking uphill. Certainly a reasonable birdie look for him. And you'll often see that right to left soft slope drag your disc out for the right-handed backhand player. You tend to always fade a touch left towards the end. Yeah, for sure. And especially since you have those trees on the right side that you really don't want to end up into. Timo here looking to have a similar line but just too low. Never had a chance to get to the basket. But good line there and he's going to have a very easy approach. Only about 35 meters left from there. I believe it was a rive from Timo. You see Temu now getting this one very overturned with a late release. He is bordering on OB there. Unclear if he stayed in bounds, although even if he is, it will be a tough scramble. Maybe there's some heavy expectations on that man coming in as the champion. I'm sure Temu is a very confident player. He has the highest of hopes for what he will do in each tournament and wow that's a huge forehand from Maure Bielman this hole is rarely reached by anyone's forehand and to be able to even reach it with the stalling out forehand quite impressive on the speed I think he has an underrated forehand and he showed that last season he has all the shots required a good scramble there from Temu gets himself into the circle and as we mentioned being a tough birdie par is the most common result here on hole two. Timo has a long look. There's that nose up spin putt. He has good range on the putt. And that's a good call on par being the most common score here. 63% par on the field. Knut trying to not get one of those. Also a very good putter. That's right in the middle and he will have almost a stroke on the field there. Finds himself in that 16% who found the birdie. Maori here, even closer. And that's a confident putt from short distance. Already bouncing back from his double bogey on one. That's great to see the strong mind. Yeah, he's not the guy to let down on his putts. At least not for many holes in a row. As we saw on one, he can have that high miss sometimes with a powerful spin putt. But moving on to hole number three interesting hole doesn't require a lot of distance 106 meters i feel like playing just slightly shorter than that with a bit of a downhill slope at the end but what you really need to worry about is this ob on the left side so you need to throw something perfectly straight hopefully not fading to the left side ob but also if you're trying to turn it over to the right there is ob on that right side just into the woods I think the OB right opens up a little bit after about 80 or so meters, but if you get anything overturned too quickly, you can certainly find danger on that side as well. And just another straight laser from Knut, but well up there. That is very safe, actually, to crash those trees close to the green. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of the common play in the field to actually turn it slightly right, but right late enough where you're getting into the circle. Maori here with a very similar play. They're both going to have, I believe, circle's edge looks. It's really up to luck from there whether you're going to have an open look or going to have a lot of trees in the way. Timo here with a hyzer release angle and you can see from his reaction, not his intended line, likely going to be finding OB. And from there it's even tricky if you're too tight on the left corner to make it to the green. It's quite a sharp angle from early OB left. Yeah, tough release there on Timo. But Temu here, after having two poor drives on the first two holes, throwing an absolute dime perfectly down the middle. 
and he's not gonna have any putting troubles from there. That was crispy from Temu, just right down the middle, didn't touch a thing. Ah, oh, and he was not as pinched as I thought, looked to have a good forwards progress and able to simply put it up there. I wonder if Timo was actually in bounds of the tee, might have gotten a good kick, because we'll see very soon. And Mauri there, we were talking about the confident putt, that was also very confident on the speed. Just gonna have a long comeback now. Knut with another great birdie, finds it from the straddle, the touch of Anheuser, guiding it to the chains with perfect height. He has three down through three, the man is on fire right now. And Timo there, good bogey putt, have to respect that, he's not the guy to miss many putts on the green, believe that to be one of the strong suits of his game, and the reason, or one of the main reasons why he is a 7 time German champion. As we see a bit of a speed out, I think that went through the left side chains. Absolutely, these baskets can be a little bit unforgiving if you're a touch too high on the left and right, they can push you out. and. That's the thing about that spin-heavy putt. It's either on or it's off. And for Maori, normally it's been on. We'll see if he can tighten it up a little bit. Yep, I hope so. Here we see hole number four. Another par three, 97 meters, although softly uphill. A lot of players might elect to even throw the same disc on this hole as on the previous hole, as although it looks much straighter, it's a similar hyzer flip to late turning shot into this open, very muddy green and where they'll be met with an elevated basket just to test your nerves and make it a little bit harder. Good call there on the muddy green and that's really up to the players whether they're gonna feel you know a little bit threatened by that muddy green or if they can actually use it to their advantage since a lot of players are gonna be throwing something straight. You can count for that muddy green with uh, throwing something that could on a drier green, skip more towards the left, but on this green, there's pretty much no skips. Absolutely, even pushing off that back foot for heavy spin putters can find some trouble. Temu here with a very early release this time, after a great drive on three, has found what is one of the worst case scenarios on this hole, early left, very unforgiving in there, pretty much taking par out of play if you're not near the edge. Yeah, for sure, that left bush has not only eaten up many scorecards, but also many discs have been lost there. And Maori, unfortunately, not getting the turn he wanted. Bit heavy on the hyzer there, and he's gonna have a par putt from outside the circle now. We're gonna see the forehand from Timo here, and it shapes really nicely for the forehand flex. And he's done just that, fantastic, to about five meters, getting an overstable disc on a soft anhyzer out of the hand with the late fade really does shape naturally if you're more comfortable with that shot. And Temu's just doing what he can. That's honestly great progress from where he was. Yeah, for sure. I thought he might just have to pitch to the side. But that's well done. And Knut here kind of talked over his drive, but just missed it to the right. And that's kind of the common thing here. Unless you're in a bush on this course, a lot of the times you do have pretty easy up and downs. There are certain holes on this course where you can get into really tough trouble. Speaking of ups and downs, Temu Talikainen saves the par, makes me look like a chump saying that par is out of play. Check this slow-mo out, the pop of the wrist, the full body extension, the commitment to the height. What a fantastic save from that man. Yeah, he's made uh, many of those in his garage. One of the more dedicated putting practice uh, practicers in Finland. Does he have an elevated basket in his garage? I believe he might actually have the opportunity to create one at least on top of some old tires maybe. Mauri here, great opportunity to fix some of the putting troubles and that's not the case. He's gonna have another bogey stroke. You see Timo there shaking the mud off and this is a great example of that footing Looks like even going to a straddle to not have as much of a back and forth switch of momentum on his putt. Pretty smart play there. And you can see the shoes, the mud is really taking over on this one. Knut here for the short par save. 
his first par of the round. Yeah, really good pace so far. I feel like on this course, for the top players, I think the front nine is the more difficult one. Moving on to the first par 4 of the round, hole 5, only 172 meters, not very technical off the tee, you really have to hang a forehand left and uh, try to hyzer it into this spot that we're flying over right now, also a quick flipping roller can play off the tee, and once you're in the sweet spot, depending if you're more towards the right or the left side of the fairway, you will have to shape a straight shot into the basket a bit of a low ceiling there's really a lot of a lot of space for a good drive here just don't go too far and don't be too far left absolutely i think for these guys with good forehand power this is a simple overstable driver and that's exactly it anywhere over the walking path will put you into position to look straight down the tunnel on the second and he's even gone well past that so he'll have a good straight look we go to knut now Really the drive is quite simple, the approach isn't too difficult either. You need some good touch, some good accuracy off the tee, especially from as far back as Knut is. He will have, I would say he will have about 80 to 85 meters left to the green. Absolutely, and with a low ceiling, branches hanging in that second shot, particularly with the intermittent weather, we've had showers all weekend on and off. Temu sends it just a touch long finds himself OB. We'll have a long look as well to try and get through the tunnel on his second, but will be potentially a hundred or more. Yeah, that's a tough miss. Not very often you see the OB come into play with these top level players with a forehand. As you see Maori there, going much higher, much more overstable, not risking the left side. And from here, it's a really tough window. You have to kind of throw a sweeping hyzer. Almost with a late inside. flip up. Yeah, very true. And Temu there, he's gonna have a pretty simple approach for the bogey. Not ideal on this hole. It's it's not the easiest par 4 on the course, but it's definitely not one of the more difficult ones. Knut has a slip, another very muddy fairway here. Loses his balance on the release and kicks left. Should still be able to salvage par. Maori with a beautiful flip up forehand picture perfect example of that approach shot good drive and we'll leave him with a short birdie putt well done and you can see the difference between Knut's drive and Timos and Maori's drive Timo and Maori both having quite short forehand pitches even though Timo kind of left it to the right side he's gonna have very long birdie look but not what he wanted Timo using all of the width there for that jump putt approach very well done will be stress-free, although for the bogey we go to Knut. Gives it the high stepper, but finds the obstacle along the way, and he'll be left with the tester from about circle's edge for his par. Yeah, that's a bit of a momentum killer. If he can make that putt, he's still on a very good pace. I feel like that's what sometimes happens when you have a really good start and you get one par. It can kind of throw you off a little bit. But let's see, this would be a great make to stay bogey-free on a course that isn't very often played bogey-free. What a statement from Knut there. Fantastic stuff. And that's an easy birdie from Mauri, showing off that traditional Estonian forehand. I feel like we're saying this a lot of times when there's an Estonian on commentary or on coverage, but I feel like all of the Estonians throw really good forehands. It's in the blood there. Some of the best here performing on this course. We see here hole six, a pure tunnel shot, par four, 165 meters. No more than three to five meters in width throughout the entire way until you reach this halfway point where it opens up, sloping first down, bending first to the right, and then back to the left where you have the basket perched on the hillside. 
this is just a beautiful hole, very difficult, but one thing I really love about this hole is you can actually see that basket directly from the tee, kind of tempting you to go further down the fairway than you probably need. No doubt. We have seen some players disc up to the driver, although I think the putter to maximum mid-range is the preference for most. And here's one of those, I believe, going mid-range, just getting over the path. A great drive, but I believe being on that downslope will make for some difficult footing, especially with the wet ground. Timo also playing the Heiser release to late flip, but doesn't turn it over in time and kicks left. I think if there is a more favorable direction to kick, the left is a bit more open on this hole, particularly for the second shot if you'd like to throw a backhand. And Knut off the early left tree. He will be left with a lot of distance to try and scramble with. Yeah, I don't want to make the call, but I would almost say that's instant bogey for Knut. It's going to be really difficult to get up and down from there for the par. And Demu getting quite fortunate, even missing left of the tree that Knut hit. I believe that's uh, what happens in disc golf sometimes. It's better to miss by much than miss by just a little. And it seems like his timing is maybe just a little bit off on a lot of these drives. I'm sure he'll settle into the round nicely though. Knut's looking to advance, but again, so many trees once you're off the middle. You really do have to have a good shot as well as some good luck. Timo here, also looking to progress. He's going to want to see this come back right. And as it turns over, he will be very obstructed towards the green. Yeah, he's going to be on the left side bushes there. Likely going to have to settle to play for the bogey. Knut here looking to play aggressive, but that's what happens so often on this hole. Really, when you hit early off the tee and you hit another tree, the tree kicks just add up and all of a sudden you can be looking at a 6 or 7 pretty quickly. Temu also on a placement shot finds himself a little bit of obstructed. Knut now with a straight to Heiser look. Really good looking line here. This should be near the basket. Oh, that's a beauty. Finds the hillside on the green. Cuts the hole in half. Well done there. This one is playing as the second most difficult hole and you can see why already from our coverage. Mauri here, nice forehand approach, gonna be a little bit short. As you saw, not quite the skip he was probably looking for. Also a bit of a low release. And Temu. So he's on the left side of the fairway, having to throw a glidey forehand Anheuser towards the left. And that's really well done. Hitting the hillside. The hillside is, I feel like, really nice for the approaches on this hole, because you can kind of just crash into it and you're just less than five meters away. It's true. It does feel very forgiving on the approach. Timo is looking to manufacture some sort of progress with the forehand roller. Catches him on the edge. But he'll have now an open short throw or jump putt to the green here. He's going to opt for a soft Annie. Ooh, that's not well done. He's going to have a circle's edge look here. I believe for the bogey. Which is, that's a common score on this hole. It's playing with an average of 4.61. So bogey is closer to the average than par. And that was Maori for birdie. Again, a confident putt with just a little bit too much pop. Finds himself the band. Big moment for Timo here. Great bogey save. Really good spin and height on that putt. Very committed off the straddle. Awkward stance. And you see him shake his head, but solid bogey save. Yep, that's well done. And even some of those bogey putts, I believe, you would rather have a good putt for the bogey than just a tapping bogey. Assuming that you make the putt. I believe you can get some confidence from making it. As Knut after the great start, has kind of slowed down with back-to-back -back bogeys here. Temu in for par. Certainly not a bad score on this hole, as you mentioned, Elias. Probably one of the bonus birdies on the front nine. Yeah, for sure. It's the second hardest hole on the course and also second hardest hole on the front. As we're moving on to hole number seven, a hole that doesn't really have the clearest of lines to the basket. Usually what players go with is just a straight shot into this slightly curved tree. So basically where the drone is flying is the most common route to get to the basket. 
a lot of players are trying to throw a fairway driver kind of hard, a little bit higher through the branches. If you want to go all the way to the pin, you have to challenge that ceiling. But if you're trying to just play to that 10 meter range, you can go a bit lower. Maori here. Absolutely utilizing some under stability with that hyzer flip. Kicks off the hill rather than into it. Sometimes you can get your disc to settle on that late slope right of the steps, although he rebounds back off. He'll be left with about edge of circle putt, although very uphill. The gap between the band and the cage is really small when you're putting so steeply upwards. Yeah, that's a really common result, both for Maori and for Temu. Kind of that 10 to 12 meter range. Really difficult hole to park. Let's see if Timo can get it a little bit closer. But even if not, that 10 to 12 meter putt is a really safe one to run as you have a great backstop behind the basket. And this play from Timo, whether intentional or not, is the intended line for some players simply trying to get to the bottom of the steps rather than trying to settle on top. We see Knut now, how much is he gonna push the ceiling? Him as well, just trying to get a straight one through the gap and have an open look. Elias, I totally agree. It's a really hard hole to park. I heard that you put it in bullseye in round one on this hole. Yep, very true. Need to challenge that ceiling to get as close as you possibly can as Temu almost drains it. This 11 meter putt is playing really far. Even Timo here, I believe, being just outside the circle, he will have to put at least 15 meters of power behind this. And he does just that, securing a fantastic birdie there, getting himself back to one under for the round. Bit of a roller coaster, but you can see he's here to play. I'm feeling good. I feel like that's what very often happens on this course. As we have seen, Timo's driving hasn't really been great, but he has made great putts. As Knut does as well, beautiful angle here, really seeing that flat, even slightly nose down release compared to the trajectory of the flight. Maori now with a look. This is only about eight or so meters, but needs a lot more power than that. He slides off the left side cage, and you saw a good example of that backstop there. Yep, I believe Maori probably had some trouble with getting a lot of power from his feet. It's another one of those greens that does have some slick mud common theme we're gonna see throughout the, all of them. Moving on to hole 8, an 80 meter softly downhill par 3 tunnel shot. You'll see a lot of players pick their straightest flying putter and get one up and straight through the gap. It is quite muddy although, especially on the downslope, you tend to get more ground play on this hole than many others. A lot of people will try to hit the floor around where the drone is now and slide your way up. This is almost a deceivingly easy hole. It's right there in front of you. It's an easy shot. Everybody has that 80 meter putter shot in their bag. Just all about committing. I think it's much more of a mental challenge on this one than anything else. I would agree for players at the top caliber of the sport, this 80 meter straight shot should be something they are all capable of doing. However, it's not always the case. This is a great looking line from Timo, if not a little fast, and a very fortunate result. I think that was sailing well over. Once you flip it up to flat on that downward slope, it can really fly. Yeah, for sure. I believe a common result here if people get it a little bit high in the air. Just like this one. I would expect this to be a little bit long as well. Exactly what's happening. Good backstop there. He's going to be just in the circle, I believe. A little bit of a abstracted look. And it seems fortune favors the brave here. Maori opting for the forehand. This is likely going to be a soft any with an overstable disc. Actually quite a good shot shape and he's executed it perfectly. Despite it looking like a straight to leftwards ending shot, it really does play nicely for the forehand as well. Yeah, I believe that's for the bit of a right to left slope on the fairway. So the forehand will fight against that when it's fading. Compared to backhand when you're fading you're going to go much further. But them utilizing the flat landing of the shot, not getting that glide at the end. Very well done, and that will help him kind of get his round going. Timo capitalizing on the fortunate tree kick there with a good putt. 
as he continues to push ahead below par. We go back to Knut now. Had a super hot start, has slowed down, but finds another birdie here. Fantastic stuff. And that's still a great pace, despite having two bogeys already on the front nine. Three under through eight is a very competitive score here. For sure, for sure. Especially, I would say, for most of the top players, especially the players that have a bit more distance compared to touch in the woods. I would say the back nine is the one you really want to score on. And here you go, you, we see some scores of the rounds that are already finished. Silver Lat shot an amazing 12 under round. That is the new course record, at least for now. And I believe 1079 rated, his highest ever in his career. Yeah, that's an incredible round as we're moving on to a very difficult par 4. Hole 9. Off the tee you want to throw something moving to the right. We can see tight forehands, we can see sometimes tight backhand turnovers or rollers. And then after that, it's really kind of a scramble down to the basket. You do have a couple of different lines that you can choose from. If you want to park your second shot, it's really a sweeping right hand backhand hyzer. But there are so many trees to hit on this one. Absolutely. Even from a perfect drive, it can be difficult to find a line on the second shot to get to the green. And Timo did everything he needed to do there except beat that last tree. Although that's still a manageable par play considering Elias, what's the birdie percentage on hole nine? I can imagine it's little to none. Yeah, very low. Actually, only 4%. So we have about a 100-person field that would count up to four birdies. So I guess technically it's possible that everybody on our card will birdie it. Probably not likely though, as two of our first drives are not incredible, just kind of normal. Maori really pushing the ceiling here and does not get around the first corner. He'll be quite pinched from where you need to be to access the green. We'll certainly have to scramble. And this is a hole that really often can pull out a lot of rollers from players, both backhand and forehand, just trying to make safe progress up the fairway. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like safe progress is often what you need, especially if you have a shorter drive like Maori. This is really when that bogey or even double bogey a lot of the times comes into play. It's for a good reason that this is the most difficult hole on the course, as Maori will now be in the middle of the fairway, but still over a hundred meters out from the basket. Temu looking to find this late fading shot into the window of the second tunnel, and that will be a good position to look down towards the green. He's played two good position shots and he'll be rewarded with a chance for a fairly manageable par. Speaks to the difficulty here. Timo as well, shaping a long Anheuser forehand, another common approach on that second shot. Yep, and Knut here actually in a very good position. Good angle, but just a little bit too low. I believe he did hit the intended gap. Might have been a little bit heavy on the Heiser and too low there. So now he still will have to scramble for the par. And Maura here going wide. This is wider than the usual gap for a lot of players, but getting a great progress believe he will be inside the circle, putting at the basket. That is one of the best shots I've personally seen around that corner, making it all the way down. Timo doing the same here. You see a back slope towards the green. It is a very fast green, even with the mud. And very commonly, even on the putt, will players find themselves pretty far long if they don't control the distance. Timo with a smooth flattening out Anheuser forehand. Gets that last bit of slide to put himself up and in the circle for par. Knut here. Same sort of angle. He was on the left side, so having to shape a forehand Anheuser. Well done, though from that position there is a very thick tree that will likely be directly in front of the basket. And Mauro here, just 10 meters, confident stroke, but not quite to be really summarizing his front nine, going plus over already, and I believe a bit more here. Timo with a healthy par save there, looking back up towards the basket. Well done to maintain his two under here in the front nine. Yeah, really par is kind of the score that you're looking for on this hole. Of course, everybody, almost everybody is playing for the birdie, but with 4% of the field birding and only 39 getting the par, you're fully okay with uh, 
playing for that four. There's no doubt. There could even be an argument made to just call this a par five outright, although I don't think they need to. I think a difficult par four is, has its a good place here. Yeah, I would very much agree. We are still on the Pro Tour, so we're having a look at the scores throughout nine holes. Knut with the hottest round off the card at three under, but nobody really shooting lights out on this front. No, it's certainly attackable, although as you mentioned, the front nine really requiring great touch and accuracy. The back nine opens up a little bit more for this level of power player. Yeah, for sure, and hope to see you guys on that back nine. We will have more open holes, further shots, and hopefully some more birdies. Absolutely. Elias, it was a pleasure. Thanks for joining.